What is going on, people? What's going on? What's about going on, man? Nothing. Can't sleep. Ah, uh, so I figured it's time. It's time. It's time to do the prediction of Devin Alexander versus Kell Brook. For the early part of the year. This would be the most intriguing fight to me. Intriguing for several reasons, and I'm going to get into it. But this will be my prediction slash breakdown as usual. And I'll tell you how I see it. Now, first let me talk about these boxers. Devin Alexander is a good talent. That's as far as I'm going. Devin Alexander is a good talent. If anything, when I watch Devin fight, y'all might bash me for this, but when I watch Devin fight, to me, he looks like what Amir Khan wants to be. A fast one-two puncher who actually, who actually, uh, just doesn't jump in wildly. One, two, one, two, one, two. He is patient. Devin is patient. He picks his spots. He jumps in one, two. One, two. One, two. He throw that uh that left hand kind of wildly sometimes. I mean, sometimes it won't go straight in. Sometimes he kind of kind of hook it. And then he'll spin, he'll, he'll, turn his, he'll turn the fighter he's fighting, spin out, and try to pop him a couple time, more times. One, two. One, two. I will say, if Amir Khan can get some of the patience in the ring as a Devin Alexander, he'll be good. One thing that Devin has, oh, no. Yeah, there's one thing that Devin has over Amir Khan, a better chin. It's one thing that Amir Khan has over Devin. Now, I won't say uh, accuracy. I would say how he punches. See, as, as wild as Amir Khan is, I, mean, I won't also call him wild. As much of an explosive one-two puncher it is, he is, he can throw every punch. He can throw hooks left or right. He can throw uh, straight down the pipe. He can throw uppercuts. He has everything at his arsenal. Devin is kind of limited on that. Devin, Devin hasn't shown me in the six fights I've seen of his that he has a barrage of punches. He's mainly a one-two puncher. It is what it is. So, what he lacks to me in boxing ability, he makes up with, for, I mean, he makes up with, with speed. Now, we, let's jump to Pine and talk about Kell Brook. From the Various fights I've seen at Kell Brook. Kell Brook is an all-around boxer. It's not a punch he can't throw. He's decent fighting off his back foot. Uh, you give him a, a chance to lead. He's very aggressive with his combinations and, and picking his shots. He's a good overall boxer. I can't say anything more uh, really negative about him except for one thing. Although he can box off his back foot, if you attack him first before he has a chance to throw, he can counter punch. He's just not really good at it. If you throw more than one punch at him, 
he will go straight defensive. He won't he won't lean and pick his shots on a counter punch. He won't do it. Especially if you throw a one to three punch com I mean a two to three punch combination. He's just gonna bag up and dodge, dodge, dodge. So when it comes to this fight, I look at it as Devin's vulnerabilities against Kell Brook, one vulnerability. So here's here's the thing. When they step in the ring, and I can honestly say the first round, maybe the first two rounds, because of what both boxers are good at, is going to be very slow. Because Devin doesn't start off fast. He kind of try to see what you're going to do, and then he implements. Oh, it's one more thing. Uh, Kale really doesn't have an inside game. He does, he, he'll rather hold, tie you up. He really doesn't have an inside game. But, so, the first couple rounds are going to be really slow. Them trying to fill each other out. And Kale being the first time across the pine and one to, to, uh, to impress everybody, He's going to try to take his time to figure out what exactly that he saw in video that Devin is going to try to implement in the ring and vice versa. I think, me personally, not only because uh, Devin Alexander is left-handed, but I think Kale Brooks, best punch in this fight could be his lead right hand. Reason I say that, let me get this right. When uh, Devin is standing there and he's about to throw his ha, 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 he don't keep his left hand up. He don't keep his left hand up at all. So every time he go to throw, he drops his left hand. So if Kell Brook can get around that right jab, he has Devin's chin all day. It could be as simple as it could be simple as Devin. I mean, Kell Brook dip it to the uh, dip it to his left just a little bit and throwing a, a wild overhand right. He can tear, tear uh, he can tear uh, Devin's chin up. The only thing is that he's not really that great of a counter puncher. If Devin applies good pressure, and I don't mean just getting up in his chest, Kel chest. I'm talking about, I'm talking about if he throws combinations. You know how he do. Uh, jab, left hand, jump out. Jab, left hand, jump out. Uh, Lee left, jump out. If he could keep mixing it up enough so uh, Kel won't get his timing down, that overhand right is not going to land as crisp. But the fact that uh, Devin drops his hand every single time he throws his right hand jab, that chin is open. That chin is open. Kale can take advantage of it, but he will have to time it just right to lean to his left and come come across with overhand right and bust that chin. Bust that chin wide open. But same time, Devin has a decent chin, so it's not like he's going to go down. So if that happens, adjustments will have to be made. Now, Devin... In this fight, all he has to do is be Devin. If he just uh, be himself and be first, he could beat Kell Brook. And another good thing uh, that Devin has in this fight is when he jumps in with his 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, and gets all up in your chest, if he don't spin out and, and, and pop you again, uh, Kale would just tie you up. Well, Kale doesn't do a great job at tying you up, so that'll give uh Devin 
plenty of opportunity to, to do some work in the inside because Kale is not going to exchange with him on the inside for the most part. Devin could do so much more work in the inside, pretty much like how uh, how uh, Timothy Bradley did him when they fought. Timothy would get in the inside and outwork, uh, outwork Devin Alexander. It would be the same difference. The only difference in this fact is Timothy Bradley only wanted to get on the inside to outwork Devin. This In this fight, Devin is going to work outside, and when he falls inside, he could do some work. Uh, and he would definitely outwork Kell Brook. Um, if, if he can... If he can keep that up, he'll win this, this fight. I don't think his lead left would be that successful because uh, Kale does some good head. I mean, not great, but he has some decent defensive skills. He knows how to bob and weave to get out of the way of some punches. Devin will probably throw, throw that lead left to the gut most of the time anyway. And uh, uh, Kale is just going to end up trying to focus on trying to catch him when he does that. Speed factor, Devin has a speed factor in this fight hands down. It's going to come down to Kale Brook and his timing. The only sad thing is Kale is not that great fighting off his back foot. He can fight off his back foot, but he's more comfortable when he fights off his back foot if he's leading. If he's not leading... And you put, apply pressure to him. You give him some one-twos, some combinations, two or three punch combinations. He shells up and goes into a de defensive shell. He just shells up real quick. That could be Devin's uh, saving grace in this fight. To be first, throw combinations, and work hard on the inside. For, for Kel Brook, to win this fight, he's going to have to time that jab to throw overhand rights and be first. Kell is very good, a very good offensive fighter. If you give him the opportunity to lead, he's going to pick you apart. So he would, that's, that's his key to the fight. Be first. Time that overhand counter right. And... When you tie up, wrap both of those arms up. Because if you're not going to, you know, stick something in, the, uh, in Devin's gut, don't let one of his arms be free. You don't tie up that way. He's going to learn have to learn how to tie up extremely well, which I've never seen him do in the fights I've seen, to stop Devin from working on the inside. But overall, I'm still going to take Devin Alexander in this fight. I think late in the fight, after uh, after uh, some good shots, it's going to be... No, I won't even say that. Some people might go back and look at uh, Kell Brook versus Carson Jones, and they look, oh, he tired out towards the end. That really wasn't the case. I mean, after he got his nose busted up by Carson Jones, he was eating blood, and he couldn't breathe out his nose. A real botch of nose. Keep your jaw tight. Breathe through your nose. When you can't breathe out of your nose at all, and you're basically swallowing blood, you got to breathe out of your mouth. And you have to kind of control your breathing so you don't get caught with a shot, with a shot to your jaw while your mouth is open trying to breathe and break your jaw like, like, uh, like Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz got caught breathing through his mouth, trying to be aggressive, and got his jaw broke. So when you're in a boxing match, you kind of you kind of breathe shallow. 
you kind of breathe shallow because you want to make sure you can tense up the uh, tense up the drum uh, before you get popped in your face because you don't want to get your jaw broke. So when he couldn't breathe through his nose, he wasn't breathing well in that fight, which led to him tiring towards the end. From other fights I've seen in uh, Kell Brook, he don't tire out like that. So I think when it comes down to it, both fighters are going to be game the whole entire fight. And I think it's going to come down to a split decision. And I'm going to give it to to uh, Devin Alexander. Because his speed, and if he applies punching pressure, not just get up in his chest, but be, being first with combinations, he can win this fight. He can win this fight. So, yeah, I'm going to say it again. Split decision for Devin Alexander. It's probably going to be one of the best fights for the first quarter of this year. I'm 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 excited to see it. Uh I'm I'm happy for the fact that they're doing it in, in my home state, getting it in in a D. Because uh we don't need to see any more St. Louis cooking for Devin. Like how he got over uh Lucas Vitise. Uh, we don't need to see no more home cooking. Shouts out to my uh, folk in the Lou. I got man family there plus my kid there. But that's how I see it. That's how it's going to go down. But let me, as always, let me know what you think. Damn, this video long. I'm not used to doing videos this long on a prediction, but oh well, it is what it is. Until the next one, doses.